guys, so today is a little bit of a different video and a much different setup. I'm actually in our bedroom and I had to like construct a really weird setup. So if you watch the vlog coming out on Monday, you'll see just how weird this whole thing looks. But I have really wanted to get back into doing makeup stuff and tutorials and that, that sort of thing because it's kind of why I started Microscope Beauty in the first place. So don't fear, there's still definitely gonna be plenty of planner videos, but I'm gonna throw in some beauty stuff here and there. So today I am sharing with you my current makeup routine and if you want to see all the products and all that information there will be a coordinating blog post in the description with nice photos and all of that stuff but I'm very excited because this is the makeup look I almost always do so if you ever see videos or anything it's usually this or some variation of this and I think it's really wearable and the kind of makeup that looks like you're not wearing any I guess but you look good doing it I guess like you look good, you look healthy, you look awake, but it doesn't look too over the top, which is kind of like my my thing. So usually in the morning I keep my hair wet, but I have dried it so it looks somewhat nicer, but I'm gonna have to figure out what to do with the bangs because usually those are pushed back, but let's get into this thing. So the first product I use is this Stila One Step Correct, and I just take about a full pump on my finger Maybe a little bit extra if my skin is feeling particularly dry, which it is winter, so it of course feels that way. And then I just gotta put it all in the face. Yeah, the bangs are gonna be, be an interesting uh, thing to solve. Because usually in the morning I just kinda slap everything on and just hope for the best. So I figure as I'm going along, I'll just chat to you more like a chatty, uh, get ready with me, I guess, or tutorial, I don't know. This is the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue, my fave, love it. I am in the shade Natural 5, and usually I'll take off my engagement ring because I don't like getting it dirty. I put just like a healthy pea-sized shape, if you guys can see that, and put it all over my face. There's no technique to the Kayla makeup method. Depending on like what I'm doing or how long I want the makeup to last or like how my skin is looking, I'll do more or less. This is kind of like the, the least amount I will do because it just lightly covers the skin but not in a very heavy way. Like I don't know if you can see there's a couple of little blemishes down there. We'll tackle those a little bit later on in the steps. But I just spread it around my face and then my hands are really gross so I always have a makeup wipe and I just clean off my hands and then dry them on a towel because it gets pretty gross if you can see that. You can use a brush, I just prefer the application of my fingers. I love how I can get into like the creases and stuff and it looks more uniform and more natural which is obviously what we're going for. Next is brows. This is the Anastasia Brow Wiz. If you watch any of my beauty videos, all these products are gonna be like, yes, Kayla, I know. You talk about them all the time. What I really like about this is the spoolie. So you just go and uh, make sure your eyebrows don't look crazy. Every time I take a shower in the mornings and stuff, my eyebrows look like I'm an elf. They kinda like stick up all over the place. And then I just fill in my brows. So I've never actually like, got my brows professionally waxed or done. So this might be easier for some of you guys who have. I am definitely considering it for my wedding to get them a little more tamed, but I just follow their natural shape and then guess and check. So this one obviously looks like it has a higher arch now and they're just a little bit darker. So nothing crazy, just enough that they look a little bit more prominent. And then I just try and balance them out. Brows are still definitely a learning process for me. There are times where I'll go through like the entire day and Alex will suddenly be like, why is one of your eyebrows higher than the other? And I'm like, gee, thanks. We've done so much stuff in public today and my eyebrows were not even. So they're okay right now. This one still needs a little bit of an arch. I'm sure there's easier ways to do this. And like I said, if you have your brows professionally done, they'll be a little bit more even. But 
if you're like me and they're just natural, that's how you do it. That's what I'm going to end with. I think they're pretty good. I think it gets the job done. So I can put my ring back on now. I like to put it on as soon as I am done with any of the like um, all over the face stuff. Next is eye primer and I like the Kat Von D high voltage one. It is super pigmented. I've talked about this before that you need like very little and so I'm gonna show you just how little you need. Barely anything, barely. Like it's crazy and this is such a large package. It's a lot larger than the NARS one or basically anything that's comparable. And I just put it on my lids. If I have a little extra, I'll raise it up to the brow bone, but I don't stress about it too much. Most of the time, this makeup routine is very simple and quick. I can probably do it in about five to 10 minutes if I'm focused and just getting things done. So for eyeshadow, any sort of neutral eyeshadow will work, but I have been obsessed with the Butter London's Natural Charm Clutch Palette because the shades are just so easy to wear. They're just natural, easy shades, as it says natural charm. So the three brushes I use, one of which is from Joanne Fabrics, it is a Maxine's mop brush, and it just has this flat tip to it that I really like using for all over shadow. And then I have the MAC 2 and 7 for the outer corners and a little bit of blending. And then the Mirabella Eye Blender for any light shades and just a full coverage all over blending. So I'm just gonna take the lightest shade and apply it to my brush as heavily as one can and just pat it onto the lid. So obviously it's not super pigmented or in your face, but there's definitely something going on the lids right now. I'm gonna take a combination of this darkest shade right here and this like um, shimmery shade onto the 217. Kind of blend them together and then just go right in the outer corner. And I kind of just plop the brush down and massage it around. So I'll go a little bit darker than that. So when it's not blended, it kind of looks very just stark and obvious. If there's fallout, that's totally fine. It's because of fallout that I do my concealer near the end to kind of just clean up any sort of mess that I've made because I am not a very clean makeup applier. So yeah, I kind of leave it very messy and just all over the place. And then I take the blending brush and the lightest highlight shade and go up to my brow bone and then just blend like crazy. And it smooths everything out really, really quickly, giving it a very natural look while still obviously having color and definition. Next is eyeliner, and I don't always do this step, but definitely if I'm filming, I like the Stila Smudge Stick in Damsel. Stila's like crayon eyeliners are the best I've ever tried, like better than Urban Decay, just amazing. So you're not really supposed to do this. You're not supposed to like tug on anything, but I kind of really gently lift my eye so I can get onto the tight line just to get a very faint line, but it makes a huge difference when you put mascara on, which is what we're doing next. I always curl my lashes. You don't have to if you have curly lashes naturally, but mine stick straight out, so I definitely need to do this step. And for the longest time, I was really afraid of eyelash curlers, but it's like one of the easiest parts of putting makeup on, I think. You just go in, grab the curls, and go. So I'm using the Lancome Hypnos Drama Mascara. It's one of my favorite mascaras. It's just so, it makes a huge difference. Like, I never get to show you guys the, the difference when I'm like talking about mascara, but this eye obviously has it and this one doesn't. It just finishes your look so much that I just sometimes put mascara on and nothing else if I need to look a little bit more put together and I don't have time. I always make sure to put a little bit effort in when I'm doing the corner lashes and the inner lashes because that really helps to define your eye. 
And having the like outside lashes flip up a little bit more makes the dark shadows stick out and it just looks a little bit cleaner and a little bit fuller. So now it's officially time for concealer. I do it randomly throughout the entire process, but I find that once my eyes are done, it's a really good time to just get in there. I use the Urban Decay Naked Skin Weightless Complete Coverage Concealer in light, natural, neutral. And I just take a little under my eyes, around my nose, on my nose, and all over my chin, because my chin's usually the worst spot on my face. Sometimes I will use the Real Techniques contour brush to kind of just dab it all in, but if my eyes are done, I try to avoid this because if I'm doing a brush, I kind of just go like crazy all over. But when your eyes are done, you don't want to like fuss with it or get up in there. So I use my ring finger to kind of just blend it in and I always bring it up. So once I get to the outside of my eye, and my hair's not in the way, I bring it upwards to kind of lighten the whole under eye area. So we're basically done. Not much has changed. I feel like I look very similar, but it's just a little bit fresher and a little bit nicer. So I'm going to take this, I do not remember what type of brush this is. It's an angled brush and it's a blush brush. And I have the Urban Decay Afterglow blush in video. And you just swirl your brush all over the place, tap it off a little bit, and then apply it to the apples of your cheeks upward. When I first started doing makeup, I never brought it upward and it was kind of just like two pieces of color on my face that didn't really blend in. But bringing it all the way up to the hairline really lifts my complexion and makes me feel like rosier and more wake and it just looks so much nicer having it upwards. For lipstick, I tend to choose something that's just not fussy at all. So an Urban Decay Revolution lipstick is my go-to. This one is in Rush and it's my favorite lipstick. I know I love MAC lipsticks to like the end of the world and back, but there's just something about this lipstick. It's such a wearable color. It's not out there, it just looks so natural. And I like the consistency. I like how thick it is because I know it's gonna last a lot longer. MAC lipsticks don't last as long as these do. So if I'm trying to just get my makeup on and be done for the day, I will usually go for this over a MAC lipstick. But if I want to keep applying it and I know I'm going out and I'm gonna go to bathrooms and touch up and all that stuff, then having a MAC lipstick is totally fine. So once my makeup is done, I really want it to just stay put the entire day. So I highly recommend setting sprays. I know people are like on the fence about them. I particularly love them and use them every single day. They're super hydrating and they kind of just smooth everything out to a nice finish. So usually I use the Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray, but I recently got the Body Shops Vitamin E Face Mist, which is really good for this as well. So I just shake whatever I'm using up and apply it a decent distance from my face and close my eyes and just spray it all over. This one smells like roses. And the first time I wore it, Alex was like, what's that smell? I was like, it's roses. And he's like, I like it. So it just blends everything together and makes the end result a little bit nicer looking if my hands did something weird when I was applying the base. But that is it. That is my go-to makeup routine. Super easy. There's no contouring. There's no highlights. It's just slap a little makeup on your face and you look a little bit more awake. But that is gonna be it. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of this video. If you want to see any more makeup tutorials or any kind of stuff you want to get into. Next week, I'm going to be showing you my hair tutorial. The curly hair that you guys have seen in vlogs and over the past couple of months finally going to show you how I do that. So definitely stay tuned and subscribe so you don't miss that kind of video. But I had fun doing this. I think I'm going to try and do this a little bit more regularly. So let me know that you like it by giving it a thumbs up. But I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!